That's something I struggle with a lot is imposter syndrome. And it's like really hard for me to like write content that I don't think is extremely interesting. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm my worst audience because I wouldn't watch half the things I make, but then people yeah. watch them. Hey guys, I'm about to have a coaching call with my student, Jamie. Jamie is an entrepreneur, freelance creator, and we're helping her build a brand. I mean, I'm ready to have everything set up. I'm pretty excited, so let's get started. Hello. Hey. How are you? I'm good. I'm really nervous, but excited. I think it's talk to you. Don't be. It's going to be fun. So, Jamie, I know a little bit about what you're up to and your work, but for the audience, can you give me a quick intro on yourself? So my name is Jamie, and I was a previously a freelancer as a brand designer and social media strategist, but now I'm a co-founder and the creative director at a startup called Continuum, which is the all-in-one platform for collaborative freelance work. My overall goal with coaching is confidence and then like understanding how to navigate all these niches and kind of like the next step. That's something I struggle with a lot is imposter syndrome. I think anyone my age does as well. So navigating like the process of learning and growing in public while establishing my expertise, like, you know, I am good at what I do, but I'm like, I'm only 18. You know, there's only so much that I can claim. So also navigating that is something I'd like help with. That's super cool. I, I didn't know that we're the same age. I thought you were older. That's super cool. Are you yeah, in school? No, no, I dropped off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> we do not condone dropping out, but that's cool. What do you think is preventing you from thinking of yourself as a thought leader, let alone making other people feel like they can look up to you? I think something that's a big problem with me is that I get so caught up and just like busy in like the day to day of like doing the strategy and like the branding and stuff for Continuum that I feel like I'm not having time to like really learn and like focus on kind of getting the expertise I would like to be a thought leader, which I guess I just have like really high expectations for myself. And I'm struggling to kind of find the time balancing, you know, making my income and, you know, doing my passions, but also like having like this growth, like personal growth. I feel you, dude. You said you have a high expectation. Like what is your expectation? Well, something I do with my own Instagram is like, if I'm not like totally having an aha moment about the content, I don't post it. <laughs> and it's like really hard for me to like write content that I don't think is extremely interesting. So like a good example recently is like I did like a, a little like walkthrough of when you should hire certain designers and certain professionals in your branding process and I was like this is this is dumb like this is pretty obvious but it got a lot of attention because it was like so simple so I guess like a, another problem within that is like understanding that not all my content needs to be super fantastic and for like the you know mid-level professionals but also for like my less experienced audience I feel you, dude. I, I exactly know what you mean. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm my worst audience because I wouldn't watch half the things I make, but then people yeah. watch them, right? So you have time, expectation. What else is preventing you from seeing yourself as a thought leader? I think the confidence also kind of like ties into a lot of it. I don't like command the camera like at this point. Like I, I feel like I'm getting better, but it's I'm still just like missing that like that attraction like aspect. Do you get what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. I mean, there's this whole like YouTube persona or even entrepreneur persona that's very in your face, in your, you know, very like, hey guys, welcome back to the show. Yeah. And sometimes I play that persona, but also I know day to day life, no one acts like that. What we'll do this call and I just want to give the audience a little of a structure. My brain is like, I like just rambling, but I also want to give you guys a table of contents. So what yeah. we're gonna do today is we're gonna go into not fixing, cause there's nothing wrong with not feeling like a thought leader. I think everyone feels that way, but we're gonna go into for Jamie, what she feels like it's limiting her, which is time, high expectations and the confidence. That will be the first part of this, this video. And the second part will be about the content because I know that you mentioned that you just wanna know what the fuck to do with your TikToks and, and your personal stuff as well. Sounds good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To peel back the layer of feeling like you're not being a thought leader, the first thing you mentioned is time. And I think that um, a really good person in my life named uh, Kate, she's like a mentor. She used to, this is like very casual and I hate to flex, but she used to be the VP of Cinnabon. So I think she's pretty fucking cool. She mentored me and she was saying how she doesn't manage time, she manages energy. So what she does is she creates like her weekly spreadsheet of what she's doing. And I created mine as well. I'll probably put a picture up here later. And what she does is she lists out everything she's doing in every hour. I mean, for me, you don't have to be that extreme, but you can, you know, you can like time block it. So for example, mm -hmm. 9 
two to social media, two to five continuum. Like you can figure out what that looks like. And what she says is it's not about managing your time. It's about your energy. So what she does is she color codes each Thing she does. If it's red, it means it drains you of energy. If it's green, it gives you energy. What she says is like, you don't want to schedule three red things back to back. You want to give yourself a buffer, maybe add a green in there. Or if it's going to be a stressful day of all red, the next day, maybe take it easy and have more green. So this is like my biggest thing I learned. Uh, there's a book that you'll love. Have you heard of Productivity Project? Mm -mm. Read it. It's so good. So this book okay. says that if something's really like draining you, like you have this thing, you're like, fuck, I have to do this. There's yeah. a couple of methods you can do to make your life easier. You can set a timer. So like, if it's hard, spend only 25 minutes. That's what they said, which is interesting because you're, you're not trying to get through all of it. You're just trying to get yourself to do it and not feel burnt out. The second thing they say is you can do it in a fun location. Now I know it's COVID, but like I recently, I've been kind of weird. I like do my work on the floor, like literally the floor. And I like <laughs> I lay down and I'm not joking. Okay, don't laugh. But going from a new position helps your brain treat it in a fun way. So sometimes I live by the beach, I'll go to the beach and like work on my laptop. If it's a hard tax, a task, like paying taxes, I will literally do that. And the third thing is you can give yourself a reward. I know this is kind of strange because it's pretty obvious, but like, and you're like, I don't need this, but this is a game changer for those draining tasks to give yourself an incentive. So for me, I really like making you know, a clay ring. So if I finish a task, I will have another hour to do what I like. This is a really like overarching thing. I feel like a lot of creators have, and probably you and I have, because you're kind of a, an overachiever in this way, but you don't want to finish everything in one day. This is such a weird advice the book gives, but it's okay to have like three more things on your to-do list. You don't want to be that person at the end of the night where you've done everything and you're so burnt out and tomorrow you're not sure what to do because there's nothing left to do. And I feel like a lot of people have these stacking to-do lists and it overwhelms them. But if anything, you should look at it like it's okay to have these to-do lists because it means tomorrow I have a plan. Okay, so for like the confidence part and the high expectation, I think they go kind of together. What would you think your friends think about you? When they describe Jamie, what would they say about you? Definitely more extroverted. Oh, oh, then I'm a know-it-all, probably too. Imagine your most like best self. How different would that be with your current self? Does it look any differently? Does she sound differently? Yeah, I think now that you kind of bring up friends, like the way that I behave like on camera and like right now and on TikTok versus the way that I behave with my friends is like so different. Really? So I think, yeah. So I think that my best self would be as like crazy and as extroverted as I am off camera, as I am on camera. <laughs> when you feel like your most self, where are you? I'm definitely just with like my girls or like my friend Noah, shout out Noah. Probably just like memeing, like reenacting like vines or TikToks, definitely. Yeah, I think that you want to minimize the gap. And when I'm talking about the gap is who you show up online versus who you are. It's crucial that you minimize that difference because if there's a huge difference, you're not wanting to show up. I'm really fired up about this because for a while, my gap was really big. I think I was this crazy, you know, to my friends, people would call me loud, bubbly, enthusiastic. And in my videos, if you look at my top three YouTube videos on this channel, I literally look like I'm on drugs or like I'm just tired or like I just look so chill but not in the chill that I, I am it, it's this very like put together version of myself it took me two and a half years to like merge it and I can go into how you can merge it easily but a lot of the internet puts a lot of pressure in this certain persona for an entrepreneur and I didn't fit in that what I'm trying to say is I honestly think you don't need to be that charismatic loud version of yourself if that's A, not you, and B, you don't, you don't like it. I think you should definitely figure out how to be more of that extrovert itself that you mentioned. But in terms of like the actual projection of your voice, it's so hard to do that when you're alone in your room. I don't think people understand. It's so weird and awkward talking yeah. on camera, right? One tip I can recommend, I don't know if this is strange, but your friend Noah? Yeah. Hang out with Noah, make a video together. I know that's really strange to bring your friends who maybe aren't in business together with you, but it ch even if they're just in, maybe not watching you, that's weird. But like whether it's a day in a life and you can at least have that person next to you. You wanna figure out an environment where you're the most yourself. Over time, you can lose this kind of crutch, but you know, my recommendation is the easiest way to do this is vlogging. If your friend is cool with it, of course. So I've recently on my channel have been mixing a little bit of my marketing tutorials with my day in the life of just like going to Whole Foods. And it's been really mm -hmm. fun. I think the key though is to have fun with it. Maybe it doesn't make sense for continuum, but for your personal stuff, there could be something there where your cat is next to your laptop or you're petting them kind of creepily, but in a fun way. It's so hard to find 
yourself when there's no one that's you feel like represents you. So for example, if you don't see people petting your cat on TikTok talking about marketing, you'd be like, what's the point, right? So I definitely understand how uncomfortable it is because if no one's like you, you feel like something's wrong with you, but that's not the truth. It's just people aren't confident enough to be that fully themselves. And I think that leads mm -hmm. me to part two, which is your content. Are you feeling like Reels is like your, your main focus now or where does um, your confusion kind of start? I think my main focus is on short form video, but it kind of comes back to like the confidence and like, how do I make my videos better? And how do I make it more fun for me? And less of like, like you were mentioning like the red, the red tasks, like how do I make them not like red tasks mm. for myself? Okay. I like this. Okay. So now that I understand the situation, I totally get it. Like I feel you. Cause I was on, um, I feel like this entire video is me just being like, I feel you. <laughs> Good though, it's fine, that's what I mean. I do, because it's so real. I, I remembered I sat still making marketing content for what, three years on YouTube. And I just like, I think it drained my soul a little bit. I uh, had no friends. I just made, you know, how to, hey guys, what's up? Today I'm gonna teach you how to, like, it was like that. I'm so glad you're like realizing that it's not serving you as much or giving you as like, excitement. Cause for the while, like the longest time I was in denial, Jamie, I was like, I love this content. What are you talking about? And then me in the corner, just crying. <laughs> so you're very self-aware on that. Is most of your focus right now actually on continuum? Jamie or 50-50, like what would you say your priorities are? I think my priority just because of the time and because of like where we are in terms of like, we still haven't had um, like product market fit yet. So like the majority of my focus is in continuum, but I'm still kind of thinking about kind of like on the back burner and also I guess kind of at the same time because when you think about like at least my philosophy is that people are investing in the founders not in the company a lot of the time so I think it's important to kind of keep up you know like at Jamie Gannon as like the face of the company especially. In terms of marketing this is what I would say like for example say you're making content I would lead in with for every piece of content you make on Continuum you make two on Jamie and here's why it's not about putting continuum in the back burner, but it's exactly what you said. If you're leading with a face, I think it's important to make content that you can make more frequently because quantity is important on TikTok in short form. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I almost think if it's easier for you to put out what are NFTs on continuum and then two pieces of random content, whether it's you making coffee or tea, like just make it weird. Like it doesn't have to relate to marketing. I think that will help a lot of A, the workflow, the fun, the confidence, because confidence takes time. And I honestly think it'll help your brand long -term, term because when you're more consistent and and frequent on, on uh, your personal brand, it helps drive traffic to the second brand. Okay, I have a question. So for one, how do I ease into kind of this more like lifestyle, like casual Jamie content? And two, when that doesn't perform as well, or when there are fluctuations in my audience, just because that's what happens when you switch up your niche a little bit. How do I gauge that it's working? So if like my views, my likes drop like significantly, like how do I, how do I know when to stop or when to shift in that regard? I love this question. Are you ready? Okay, the key is you don't pivot. You don't make a huge cutoff. And this is what you do. It's really three steps. It's you want to find a TikTok trend. So ba basically now your content is not reliant on you, but it's around culture. The trend can be anything. The trend can be like an audio. It could be a dance. It could be, uh, there's this one meme where it's like the drama meme where it's like, you think girls are hard? And then, then it's like the drama song. It's, it's like, like dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Like that could be the trend. The, the trend is whatever consumers will find entertaining. And then the, the second part is merging it with what you want to say. So like, you know, it's the freelancing community. You can do it. If it's about like, hey, I'm like having imposter syndrome, you can do it. Like it could be a meme around like, I can imagine this. Actually, this might be really funny to you if you want to do it. It's like, you think you have imposter syndrome brand, bad? And it's like the dun dun. And then you're just like, well, look at me. I don't know. It could be just something where it still relates. <laughs> yeah your brand the reason why i think this works is because you're you're putting away the pressure on your audience and more around like TikTok helping you find the audience, right? Because you're merging it. And then step three is this is where you can become very personable. People will naturally ask you questions. Like if someone asks you why your voice is so soft, reply to the comment. I am not joking. People don't reply to comments enough. People just type. You need to make a response video because response videos give you the ability to actually be a thought leader because like people are asking you or if they're not asking you, you know, like you can just respond to it, right? And what happens is this is where you can show your character. This is where you can show your cap. This is where you can show the random shit because now, okay, I'll give you a really good example of this in a little bit because it doesn't make sense right now. But if you keep doing trend and merging with something and then you respond to it and you just do this every day, like twice a day, like that's the workflow, this is what could happen. So my account right now was heavily around surfing and I didn't want to talk about surfing all the time. I wanted to talk about business, but I knew if I just jumped into like marketing and people were like, what the fuck is this? So what I did is I tried to find a comment in my surfing video with a million views and I replied to the comment of someone asking me, how do you like achieve a surf lifestyle? Like that's really weird. So what happens is 
TikTok links this video of like the, the surfing audience, but then they see this like now marketing angle of me and now they're following along my journey. So you can do something very similar where you can reply to a comment of something that, you know, is about your freelancing, but say you want to talk about, you keep saying your animals, but like your bunny, right? You can find a comment of someone saying, what do you do in your data, data life though, or something? And you reply to it and then you show your bunny. And then now you have either the linkage, but it's also unrelated. And then people slowly over time follow your journey but try to make a bare minimum for yourself. I know this is super weird. A lot of people feel ambitious and they need to be like, all right, it's time to grind. Don't, I would do the reverse. Be really easy on yourself. Set the bar real low if even. Like if you can't do two TikToks, uh, Jamie, and then continuum one a day or whatever the schedule is, set it really low, be that expectation, and then you'll have the confidence to increase. Too many times I see people get really sad over a high expectation they don't meet, and then they lose confidence. The best way to build confidence is hitting a goal that you set your mind to, right? So in a weird way, like definitely do what I'm saying, but almost like take it back a, a notch or two if, if you need to. So you can feel a, like when you put your mind to something, it always comes through. In a weird way, it's like setting the bar low. I know that's kind of strange, but the same analogy goes into the gym right like if you go in with a, like a too strict of a diet you're going to binge so just like yeah. be slow on yourself it's a very long journey yeah thanks for watching today's video like and subscribe shout out to the comment twitter shout out to the comment twitter comment on this post to be featured in the next episode if you want to be the next comment winner just comment below i'm just gonna eat some lunch I'm hungry and yeah i really love you guys i have a link in the description box if you want to book a coaching call with me i do these one-on-one -on -one sessions because i love it I fucking do and if you're needing help with building your brand and figuring out imposter syndrome i'm here for you let me be your big sister okay talk to you guys later peace <laughs>